Racing isn't easy, but experiencing it is. iRacing puts you in the driver's seat with the industry's leading sim racing game. Drive on laser scan replicas of the greatest racing circuits from around the world. Go head to head against other drivers chosen by skill based matchmaking to ensure competitive racing at every level. Compete across all your favorite series. In officially licensed cars, engineered to deliver the most accurate driving experience possible. Join a race or host your own with players from across the globe. Race against the computer or in a league with friends. Feel the thrill behind the wheel. Visit iRacing.com. Welcome one, welcome all to SimSpeed TV. The Suit Speed Sports Car Series starting up again for 2024. Had our first round at Sebring a couple of weeks ago and it was an absolutely manic night. We're expecting more of the same here at Barber Motorsport Park for round two. Very tight track here, which is going to be very difficult to uh, contemplate in the Delara LMP2 machines that take up this field. To bring it to you all live on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, as well as Kick, it's me, Reese Gardner, with Jay Kennedy alongside me in the comms box and also handling production behind the scenes. Well, Jay, Barber, we love this place. It's uh, been the scene of many fantastic races live on SimSpeed TV and uh, hopefully more of the same here tonight. Yeah, fingers crossed it'll uh, provide some brilliant racing and as you said, track that we love and surprisingly underrated and underused as we zoom on into Birmingham, Alabama or Leeds, Alabama. Either way, it's the same area. It's a beautiful little area where this racetrack is located, stuck away in the hills. Um, relatively new circuit as well, which I think surprises a lot of people. You think about how long this track's been on iRacing, you feel like it's been around for a long time, but only opened in the early 2000s, but instantly become iconic within the American sports car scene and IndyCar scene. Indeed, a design penned by Alan Wilson, and uh, it's uh, also the scene of a massive car collection. It's uh, certainly fantastic to see that Barber Motorsport Park has grown in stature so much over the years. It's got an Indy car around. It's got plenty of sports car racing as well besides. So uh, the scene of uh, plenty of incredible uh, racing moments over this really interesting layout that follows the terrain and is very twisty indeed. Got a big downhill going through turns one into turn two and three, big rise out of turn four. The uh, seven, seven A and seven B complex is certainly interesting as well. A chicane going downhill through uh, a braking zone all the way through and big dives down through 11 and 12, the climb up through 13 and 14 and down into 15 to finish off the lap. There's not much room uh, around here for error. There's grass lining the circuit everywhere. And uh, I mean, in cars as fast as these, uh, it's gonna be difficult to go side by side. Even though this track's new, it does have a very old school feel about it. I just said, there's no, uh, no runoff with grass everywhere and the undulations of the, the around the place are just incredible it really is a beautiful circuit and does feel like it's a lot older than uh, than built in 2003 so um expect to see some very very good racing is it on screen there that's the uh 7 7a complex that is such a steep downhill run very very difficult to see the uh the turning points and the braking markers at that section of track so you really got to trust your instincts around this circuit instincts play a big part around this place they do indeed uh, it's definitely a driver's circuit this one it's not very technical it's all about how hard you can push what your feel in the car is well we've got a two race format here as per usual reverse top 10 for the 30 minute second race and a compulsory pit stop for two tires or more if you're feeling it after the third lap uh, 15 minute qualifying at the moment into a 15 minute race one we're about halfway through qualifying right now and here's how things look uh starting off the season lockhart brownlee and daniel benefield locking in the two top spots for drop bear motorsports matt Keane with an excellent run in uh sebring was our driver of the day 
for uh, the first round. We will have to assign another driver of the day uh, for this round here. Dan Yeaman certainly showed some really good potential in the first round. Dylan Walker and Sebastian Vandell, two of our championship protagonists from last season, didn't have the best of times at Sebring, so they're going to have to get back on the wagon here. Yeah, exactly right. They didn't have the best uh, of races, but uh, long season, so uh, we'll, we'll surely see it mix up after tonight. And of course, that was the pro standings, the M class as well, which... I think it's been a cool addition rather than having uh, drivers of, of lower I rating. We've now got the uh, the Pro and M Plus, so we've opened it up a lot more throughout the season. But the uh, the second half of that field is very, very close. Tie for third as well in the M Class. But uh, Jackson Dial and Dean Hunt leading the way at the front. Yep, will be interesting to see what Chris Fogarty and Daniel Finney can do to uh, break that tie somehow. Um, we are expecting some good stuff from Sean Bonici and potentially Andrew Proctor as well. They didn't have the best of times at Sebring either. So round two is their opportunity to uh, get back on the wagon, as I said. Meanwhile, you are part of the show as well. There's a viewer discount at sudspeed.com. Of course, Sudspeed, the um, organizers and sponsors of this series, they make sim racing gloves. They also have branded t-shirts for sale as well on their website. And if you use the code SPECTATOR at checkout, you'll get 10% off, including free shipping if you're in Australia and New Zealand. Fantastic stuff from Sudspeed as per usual. I've got a pair of their gloves and uh, they're certainly a nice piece of kit. Can't wait to see how the racing goes here today, as we file on in to the qualifying session. Dan Yeaman is currently on top. Seb Vandell here in the number one reigning champion is currently P2 and about to start a lap. Yep, about to get started on another flying lap. He's just done a very, very, I wouldn't say very slow out lap, but a reasonably slow out lap to try and get some momentum, get into the tyres and get himself some clean spaces. Come out off turn two with a couple of cars almost causing him some dramas one of them being that uh daniel benefield he's done a very very good job of clearing them and very very nice through the first sector yeah, indeed he is out of the hairpin and into uh, the turn seven complex very fast entry here make sure to climb over the curb on the way down the hill that's the fastest line through the corner and then as fast as you dare out and maybe that was an off track there for him not too sure you can dip a wheel into the grass here and have it not cost you all that much but potentially that might be lap invalidated for Seb Vandell as he goes through turn 13 this is a very magnificent area of the circuit you got to try and file in with as much speed as you can use the rise to uh, push the tires into the ground and get a little more grip Daniel Benefield improving to fourth in the meantime as Seb Vandell finishes the lap Lap. one minute 12.6 for him and that lap did ultimately count so it's not quite what he wanted though a few mistakes on that lap potentially going out for a second one the drivers have to complete all their laps before the time hits zero this is a heat session so soon as the time runs out uh, your session is done so let's see if Daniel Benefield can get another one on the board here Leading the uh, the AM class as well, Jackson Dial currently sitting in position number 11, so he'll be looking to improve on that. Whereas, uh, just uh, looking at a uh, few of the drivers a little bit further down than we may have expected, Dylan Gray, who was reasonably quick last round, he's back in 10th. That surprises me a little bit, but Benefield also, I would be expecting him up above. No disrespect to Dan Yeaman, but he's probably the most accomplished prototype driver in the field, but he's back in fourth position. Yeah, of course. Dan Yeaman, always a quick driver whenever we uh, have him on a broadcast. But yeah, Daniel Benefield, usually we see him in prototypes and sports cars being one of the top in Australia and New Zealand. So um, it's not quite where he'd want to be. But um, I, I think... Once again, you have to take into account how close the times are. It's only a gap of two tenths. So if Benefield can find that much around the course of this admittedly very short lap, then uh, he shouldn't be in much trouble at all. 
looking here at Eric Fenson, starting a little bit further back at this stage from where he would like. And I don't know if he's going to get to the line in time. Actually, you just will. So he'll be our last driver to complete a lap. Yeah, we might come back to Fenson before he finishes the lap. But Dylan Walker, currently coming through my second favourite part of the track, up that hill. Ooh. A little bit wide, though. Yep, think that might be an off track there for him and Brownlee a big well. off track for Lockhart Brownlee there. That's uh, that's obviously not good for him. Yeaman practicing a uh, pit stop here. Um, of course, the pit entry for Barber is one of the defining characteristics of the track. It's a very slow entry, but walls are close at all times, so you've got to be careful, as that is a slight improvement there for Andrew Proctor. Um, he will remain in eighth in the AM class, but still, he'd be happy to see that kind of improvement. 21st overall for him. Eric Fenson, meanwhile, a big improvement. That is uh, three positions gained up into 10th spot, as that is zero on the clock here for qualifying. That means we can go through the grid for the first of our two races here tonight. Round two of the Sud Speed Sports Car Series will be headed up by Dan Yeaman and reigning champion Seb Vandell, who did improve to second spot. Uh, Lockhart Brownlee in third alongside Daniel Benefield. That's your top two in the championship coming out of round one right there. Matt Keane, driver of the day last round, starts alongside Brandon Groach, who was one of the championship protagonists from last season Aiden Luthwait and Dylan Walker 7th and 8th with Dylan Gray starting in ninth, and Eric Fenson will round out the top 10 in our field a bit of breaking news as well car 1 that is Seb Vandell pit lane start for impeding in qualifying impeded uh, pole position driver Daniel Yeaman so that's mm. big news to just come through from race control uh, starting in 11th was uh, Henry Fenson Jackson Dial will start from 12th position. They drop back after that lap from Eric Fenson right at the end of qualifying. David Turnbull will start from 13th with Jonathan Kiley in 14th position. We go back to 15th with Vinny Ewan and Daniel Finney in the uh, position 16. 17th will go to Chris Fogarty and Sean Bonici. 18th there, 19th to Dean Hunt. Samuel Lambert in 20th and there's a couple more to round out the field. Andrew Proctor, Dan Solani and last one will be Daniel Coburn. Good to see, though, all 23 drivers did get a lap in in qualifying. We don't often see that everyone gets a lap in. The positive takeaway from qualifying. Yeah, very short session of 15 minutes. A short track here at Barber and 23 cars out on the track at a time. It's uh, very difficult to find some space for the qualifying lap that you need. Well, short formation lap for this one. We're starting on the run up to turn 12, and it should be, uh, sorry, turn 11 and 12, my apologies. Um, should be a, a nice, simple way to get things going here for the second round of the championship. Of course, the pit lane start for Seb Vandell um, will uh, ultimately mean that Daniel Benefield will effectively start on the front row and this is why Vandell got that penalty. Yeaman coming up to the end of a lap and uh, unfortunately um, that's a bit of a spin there for sorry a bit of a slide for Seb Vandell coming out of the final corner gets on the brakes early there but uh, yeah Daniel Yeaman uh, was impeded as a result of that. There's a little bit of aero push that you have to contend with in these Delara LMP2s. They produce uh, most of their downforce through the floor so uh, aero push isn't as much of a concern as it is for other categories of aerodynamic racing but regardless that is the reason why Vandell is starting from the pit lane and we're about to get things going here for the run off the grid and we have uh, a full complement of drivers here on our zoom wall Dan Yeaman, Seb Vandell and Dean Hunt on the top row and then Vinny New and Sam Lambert and Lockhart Brownlee on the uh, lower row there we'll be checking in with them over the course of the night as the pace car moves away and we get ready for our rolling start here short pace lap as well so only a couple of corners they're actually starting near the the cutoff for the short circuit so the a and b circuit go through that little chute there near the big spider that <laughs> hangs out over there it still freaks me out that there's this, all these weird wacky and weird um sculptures and things here spiders and 
an ant holding a can of Coke or a bottle of Coca-Cola. It's just very strange. Yeah, it certainly is. It's um, obviously one of the strangest circuits here in America is Barber, but it is the scene of racing here in the Super Speed Sports Car Series as Dan Yeaman puts the power down and the green flag flies. We are racing, and uh, already Daniel Benefield making up the spot on Lockhart Brownlee. He's looking aggressive here on the opening laps already on the back of our leader as we're side-by-side -side car off. Meanwhile, that's Aiden Luthwaite, who's had a bit of a tough go in the last few couple of weeks in various series we're running. He's also in AOG Fixed Indy Australia as they come into the hairpin for the first time. There's a defense from Vinny Newen on John O'Kiley in the AM class. Vinny manages to get the position there and starts to pile the pressure onto David Turnbull in car 702. Bit of a breakaway here as Jackson Dial makes the move on Henry Fenson coming into seven and eight. That is fantastic there uh, for Jackson Dial. He's looking very quick in the AM class here. He got some pace, hasn't he? Lost up into ninth position. Don't forget as well. One thing we haven't mentioned is the inversion of the top ten, which uh, did provide a bit of interest last round, didn't it? It was uh, very, very interesting to see how that split came about. As a uh, big slide through the grass there for Eric Fenton, Jackson Dole now finds himself in a Fenton sandwich. Indeed he does. The Fenson brothers racing together and Eric is wide again coming out of the final corner. Seems the tyres are not quite up to temperature yet. Dial with a little bit of a look coming into turn one. This is uh, pretty fantastic for Jackson Dial already up into ninth spot and that might be a front row start for the second race if he stays there but it doesn't look like he wants to. Eric Fenson making a few mistakes here. Bit early on the brakes for Dial there as Fenson was also early on the brakes. The other Fenson, Henry, trying to get a move done on him around the outside there at the hairpin. Didn't quite work, but you can see how aggressive the drivers are being here early on. And Eric Fenson has actually just received a black flag. Remember we saw that Aiden Luthwaite was running off the circuit at turn two. Well, that was due to contact between he and Eric Fenson and Fenson has got himself a black flag. He will have to come in and serve a penalty Andrew Proctor loses a spot to Samuel Lambert and also Sebastian Vandell, who has now made his way up to 20th outright, but still last in class. He's got a lot of work to do to gain points tonight. Has he ever? This is very difficult for the reigning champion of the series as the black flag is taken there for Eric Fenson into the pits he comes. It's going to be a straight up drive through penalty for him. Um, meanwhile, seeing Nathaniel Coburn has uh, exited the circuit completely. It looks like there's been a big problem there for the driver in last place. He's missing his front end. So, uh, big problem for Nathaniel Coburn. Looks like it happened at uh, turn 12. Big crash into the barrier. Seen that uh, trying to get a replay up on screen for us, and this is huge contact. And this won't be the only time we see this all night, whether you run a little bit wide and then come and make contact in the inside wall or just drift wide and hit the outside wall. Very, very easy to do at that corner. Yeah, and I think Coburn was a bit naughty there. Um, you're supposed to ask for a tow from race control when you have a crash like that and there's potential for a safety car. But uh, unfortunately, he uh, did not abide by that rule. So there might be further penalties for Nathaniel Coburn coming soon. Dylan Walker, meanwhile, has made his way up to fifth. He's doing very well right now, uh, trying to make up on that eighth place qualifying. Seems his race pace is a lot stronger than his qualifying pace. Henry Fenson, meanwhile, uh, starting to lose touch with Jackson Dial. Um, it seems that John O'Kiley is uh, trying to round him up here. Fenson's gone back to 12th, in fact. Uh, Daniel Finney and Vinnie Newen, as well as David Turnbull, have made their way past him. Um, oh, dear. And that's the reason why on the way into turn 14. Uh, very easy to lock up the brakes and go straight on there. These cars may have traction control, but they don't have anti-lock brakes. I think it just shows that the uh, undulation in this circuit does catch drivers out and it's very, very easy to forget. Um, in, in Not only in these cars, but in a lot of cars that we drive around this circuit, the undulations really do unsettle the car. You've got to make sure you weight the car correctly and the other part of this track as well is that the braking zones are so, so often kinked and turned as well. So turn seven, 
turn turn one or oh, sorry turn two turn seven turn 11 turn 12 and the final two corners all have curved braking zones so they really do catch drivers out just seen henry fenson have another issue at the same corner yeah i mean I've, I've lost count the amount of times i've had a problem at that corner and uh you know the curved braking zone catching you out if you don't get your trajectory just right you are going to go straight off this is the onboard here from fenson gets on the brakes, on the brakes. And, yeah he was a bit late wasn't he and unfortunately uh off the circuit once more that that corner is one of those sequences that entire final sequence you, you're basically planning for the exit from the final corner aren't you you got to try and sacrifice a bit on the way in so that you get the best exit out of that final left hander seb vandell of course with a lot of experience doing that and oh dear that's the 104 that's gone off uh, it's 404 sorry chris fogarty and that's at the hairpin looks like a bit of an issue there potentially with the number eight of samuel lambert uh lambert was behind fogarty when they started the lap and uh oh no actually fogarty did that all by himself he just lost the rear on the way in that's easy to do as well. Also, just seen there's a penalty coming for Aiden Luthwaite. Contact between he and Dean Hunt. Five second post race penalty for Aiden Luthwaite. So that'll change the post race standings as Dean Hunt, that we were just speaking about, just getting a move done there on James Solani in the Triple Eight. So Seb Vandal looks up the inside of Aiden Luthwaite and gets that move done. You know, for a pit lane start, He's having a really good run right now, as Seb Vandell, up to 14th already. I think part of it is um, not making mistakes when other people have. Uh, Barber is a track where you have to be on it the whole way around. It's uh, it's like Monaco in a way. You know, you have to constantly be on it. Otherwise, uh, one moment of distraction and you are done. Riding on board here, coming through the 11 and 12 complex with Dylan Walker in the number 53, trying to get fourth from Matt Keane. I tell you what, um, this this whole top five hasn't really broken apart all that much. Um, Benefield has lost a little bit of ground to Yeaman um, in the battle for the race lead. Lockhart Brownlee starting to pressure him quite a bit. But this is where the battle's really at between Matt Keane and Dylan Walker, both for... Um, different teams it is a drop bear motorsport one two three up the top right now so it's in their best interest not to get in each other's way yeah they're going to work together to try and break that gap and matt Keane will now be defending and defending as aggressively as he can without getting into any trouble want to make sure he holds that spot but they're also doing a good job of pulling away from brandon Groach and dylan gray behind as well so they're uh, they're breaking a bit of ground from those guys and just behind them just seeing that uh, Henry Fenton is starting to feel a bit of pressure from behind that's Seb Vandell closing in again uh, doing a very very good jo job closing these gaps back I think it will be interesting when we get to race two Vandell is not going to be far away from Benefield, Yeaman and Brownlee when we get to the race start no certainly not it's going to be uh quite an interesting uh, twist in the action of tonight. John O'Kiley, I think, with a slowdown. I think he ran a little bit too deep coming into turn seven, and so he's had to slow up and go side by side with Seb Vandell. So that makes Vandell lose a bit of ground to Fenson, but considering the sheer pace that Vandell has under him, I wouldn't be surprised if he uh, makes short work of the pass on fence and when it eventually happens. Remember, Henry might still be having some issues with the uh, braking zone for turn 14, so keep an eye on that area when they come round to it and we'll see if a move is made. Meanwhile, he has the fight once again between Keane and Walker on the run down to the first hairpin of the lap. Heaviest braking zone on the entire lap too, going downhill. Seems like Walker is having a bit of a better time through the mid corner, but Matt Keane's lining up the exit really nicely. And I think that's all Dylan Walker can really do is to flash the lights in the mirror and try and get Keane unsettled. Doesn't look too flustered as Matt Keane. He's doing a very, very good job out there at the moment. And, uh, his pace looks very, very good. Last lap by, he was the same pace as Lockhart Brownlee. So he uh, doesn't have to stress too much about the pace. Brandon Groach also matching those guys for pace as well. So there's no gap closing behind. It really is down to just these two. We got four laps to go when we come up to the line. So there's still plenty of racing left. Might even be five laps still. So heaps of action left in this one. 
Indeed, and I mean, as much action as there has been, it feels like the race only started a few laps ago. This is only a 15 minute run and the action has been coming thick and fast here at uh, the um, snaking, twisting Barber Motorsports Park. Look at that slightly wider entry there from Dylan Walker. Turn two is one of those corners where you can stick to the inside. That is fast, but sometimes double apex or a late apex is the way to go. And he's carried that momentum down the straight. He's a bit more aggressive on the brakes as well. Looks like Matt Keane is a little bit more uncomfortable when it comes to slowing down. He's also very, very good on the exit, though. Look at the gap that he pulls straight away, and it's been almost every single corner he's been able to pull that gap. So maybe he is doing a bit more of a slow in, fast out. Hey, what well, he did a good job of hooking the curb there and using that to turn him through the corner. Great run out of turn 7, 8. Through 8, 9. Love that bit. Coming up through 10. 11, 12. Just hold on through that bit. Can't see up over the hill, turn 13. Now, tough braking zone at 14. I think the thing that catches drivers out that have never raced here before is there's no actual recognizable place to, to work on a braking zone. No braking markers that you have at other circuits. They're there, but mm. they're so far away from the track. They're very, very hard to recognize. Yeah, the second half of this circuit is definitely one for the drivers that have a good sense of um, of where to position their car. You do get braking markers here in the first half of the circuit alongside, but um, they're basically your only point of reference. And uh, as you mentioned in the final few corners, uh, it is largely down to feel when you get on the stop pedal. Brandon Groach is starting to gain on these two. Matt Keane and Dylan Walker starting to slow each other up. Walker has been unsuccessful so far in his attempts to get into the top four. Matt Keane looking a bit uncomfortable, but still holding his ground. And they are costing. Um, 1 minute 12.3 on the last lap from Brandon Groach. We're looking at 112.5, 112.6 for Matt Keane and Dylan Walker. So the gap is coming down very slowly, but this is going to be a full on three car battle by the time we get to the final lap, which is gonna be coming up very soon. Only three minutes left on the clock. That was a bit more curb usage there from Dylan Walker, slight bit of oversteer, but he managed to translate it into an all right run down the start finish straight. He, look at him, he's way more aggressive over the curbs than Matt Keane is. Yeah, I think there's certain curves you can touch that actually will help you through the corner. There's certain cor uh, curves you can touch that'll help you out of the corner, and then there's other curves you just don't want to touch at all. One there at turn four, nobody wants to get close to. That's through five and six, everyone's staying off that curve. This corner exit curve, no, they're staying off that one as well. But the one through seven and at the end of eight is uh, one that you do want to be aggressive on. Watch the way you can pull yourself through the corner, through this section oh. here, over the curb. Use it to grip up. Get you through. Matt Keane doing a very, very good job of using it to grip up and get him through the corner. It's one curve that you can use and use successfully. Indeed, and you saw how aggressive Dylan Walker was over the curb. He actually got two wheels onto the grass. I'm surprised that wasn't a slowdown, but um, regardless, he's nervous. managed to carry on. Yeah, he, he's he's really dealing with those elevation changes, isn't he? Of course, uh, one of the changes for this season from the last one is a move from fixed to open setups. And so Dylan Walker, I think, uh, relishing the chance to run a bit more of an aggressive setup on the car here. And Barber's one of those places where you do need an aggressive setup it's all about um, the car being front limited around here uh, for the most part you can let the rears go um, but really if you don't have any grip in the fronts you can have a tough time here Aiden Luthwaite meanwhile making up a position there up into 16th now and uh, just getting past James Solani his next target is Dean Hunt the car that um, he made contact with which got um, him a penalty and that is another position up there for Sebastian Barndell getting past Henry Fenson, putting the number 10 back into 13th place. Seb's next uh, um, targets being Vinnie Nguyen and Daniel Finney. Turnbull versus Dial as well for last position in the top eight. There's potential here, uh, if there's a problem, for Seb Vandell to get into the top 10 and nab that race to pole position, but he doesn't have much time left to get it done. Yeah, he's really going to feel the pressure because they will get the white flag when they come up to the finish line in this next lap by. So, basically going to have one chance to get the move done. Actually, you can see the white flag is already waving there for Dan Yang, so he's already crossed the line. 
He's got a decent lead. There's uh, Mr. Yeaman. Uh, white flag is in the air, air here now. Will Vandal will be able to get himself into the top 11? If you can get 11th, I think that's a, a success. If you can get to 10th, that's a huge race for him. Yeah, indeed. It will be a, a great overcoming of that pit lane start penalty that he got in qualifying. This battle for 10th is massive. It starts with David Turnbull in 8th. And oh, wow, that's another that's position Finney. there. Yeah. That's Daniel Finney getting past there by Seb Vardell. Finney, I think, having some problems here. He goes wide and allows Fenson through as well. Finney with some issues here at the end of race one. Can he get the position back here at 7 and 7A? Seven Inside is usually where you want to be, but you've got to give each other a lot of space and fence and recognize that. Let Finney have it. Meanwhile, last couple of corners here for Dan Yeaman, who we've barely given any airtime to over this whole race, Jay. This is a dominant victory here for Drop Bear number 85, and uh, he will lead home a 1-2-3 for the team. Congratulations there to Dan Yeaman, race one winner here at Barber. A great drive as well. He did a very, very good job. Just kept it clean, kept it out of trouble. Vandal, one corner. Will he be able to get there? Oh, Turnbull with a slowdown at the final oh, no, corner. He's going to get it. Is Vandal going to get there? He's going to get 10. Oh, he is. Only just. David Turnbull. Um, a slowdown right at the death of it. Uh, actually, was it a slowdown? Um, he he run might out have run fuel? out of fuel. Yeah, I, I don't see anything uh, betraying a, a slowdown penalty for David Turnbull. He might have just run out of fuel on the way out of the final corner. If the lap went one lap longer than he was expecting based on the pace of the leaders being that tiny, tiny little bit quicker than uh, than maybe his pace was solo. So they've caught him out. Um, won't be the last time we ever see that in a race, that sort of thing happening, but what a good start to the night. Start for Drop Bear Motorsport, picking up a 1, 2, 3, Yeaman, Benefield and Brownlee. Seb Vandell has turned uh, rags into riches. He'll start the uh, main race on pole position. Indeed he will. Fantastic stuff from him. Good job from Dylan Walker to make up a few spots to round out the top five. Brandon Groach with a very consistent race there in sixth spot. Dylan Gray also making up places. Dial and Newen, they started outside the top ten. Twelfth and fifteenth translates to eighth and ninth. Fantastic stuff there. David Turnbull over the page just uh, unfortunately lost that position in the top ten. Uh, presumably running out of fuel out of the final corner. Finney and Fenson, 12th and 13th. The top 15 rounded out by John O'Kiley and Dean Hunt. Aiden Luthwaite was not able to get back past Hunt there after his uh, um, incident with him, but a five-second post-race penalty will... Uh, give him uh, a bit more to think about. James Solani, Sean Bonici, Eric Fenson and Sam Lambert will round out the top 20. And then uh, Chris Fogarty and Andrew Proctor, the last finishers on the lead lap. We saw Nathaniel Coburn with a massive crash um, through race one. He did end up making it back out onto the racetrack, but will finish one lap down for Team Bravo. And that is the 23 car field done there for the first race of the night, Jay. Just trying to work out if oh. is no slowdown. He's stuck in second. It's either fuel or he's he's had an issue with his gear. So like yeah. the fingers crossed, it's fuel because uh, we don't want him to have a tech issue. Yeah, well, I mean, I looked at the uh, the rev lights there, and it did look like the car was choking a little. So, yeah, yeah I would presume that it is uh, fuel there. Well then. We but, can, uh, a few uh, drivers coming for interviews over the next uh, few minutes, so I think you can uh, you could probably start with the first one if you want, Rose. Yeah, I think so. Looks like we've got Daniel Finney in here with us. Uh, Finney, of course, racing uh, in VR. Got a YouTube channel as well. Welcome to the broadcast, Daniel. Um, from 16th to 12th for you in the first race. Certainly looked hectic out there. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was a bit of a crazy race. It could have been a P10. Uh, with the uh, with the Turnbull slowdown on the last lap, but I uh, botched it in turn one and let Vondel through, so he got the P10 in the end. But that nah, awesome racing with the guys, super close. And the thing that amazes me about this series um, is the fact that I was only second off the pace, did my best ever lap in qualifying, and <laughs> like you say, I started down in 16th. Yeah, this um, this Stellara LMP2 is a bit of a different beast to the LMP3 that we raced last season, yeah? Oh, massively. A lot more stable, gives you a lot more confidence, that's for sure. 
Yeah, a lot more aerodynamic uh, capability there. But how are you finding the track in this car? I mean, it's 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 a really interesting double salvo to start off the season. We, we raced at the bumps of Sebring last round, and then we come to Barber, which is an absolute snake of a circuit uh, going up and down over these hills. It must be difficult to try and string a lap together in a car of this speed. Oh, it is difficult, but this is actually one of my all-time favorite circuits. It was... Uh... One of the first circuits I ever drove in our fact, the one back in the day when I first properly got into sim racing, and it's just stayed with me ever since. So it does hold a special place. And I probably not in iRacing, but across sims across the years, I've done so many laps here. <laughs> Absolutely love the place. And I suppose um, you using VR helps quite a bit with being able to sight your way into a lot of these corners. Because I remember back when I was on a single monitor racing at Barber, and it was really tough. Oh, yeah, but just because you can see where you're going doesn't mean you actually drive any better. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, yeah, th thanks very much for joining us, Daniel. It was a pleasure having a chat to you, and uh, we wish you the best of luck for the, uh, the second race of the night. No worries. Thank you. Awesome broadcast, guys. Thanks. Cheers, Daniel Finney, for joining us there. And we have our race one winner in the box as well, Dan Yeaman. Um, become quite used to having you alongside me in the comms box, and it's been a while since I've actually commentated on your racing, Dan, but uh, that was a really good start to your night at Barber. Sure was, Reese. I mean, it's very true indeed. Yeah, it's been a while since I've had a chance to listen, listen back to you, so I'll be looking forward to seeing how it went afterwards. But, um... I mean, yeah, just did a bit of practice tonight to to get my eye in after fairly decent at Sebring, apart from the the good old wobble that uh, that happened there in the features. So I need to not obviously replicate that now coming up. But yeah, put the qualifying lap together. Um, unfortunately, didn't get a chance to improve on it, but it turns out it was enough, and um, and yeah, just able to stay at the front, not do anything too crazy, and uh, and make it work. How uh, how aggressive is the setup um, that you guys are running at Drop Bear Motorsport? I would assume that you need a, a car that's very good on the fronts. Uh, yeah, definitely work in the, the fronts and also relying on slightly more rearward bias. This one's actually an old Craig's uh, setup shop from 2023 build that uh, Dan Benefield found and was doing some, some prep on. Um, so, yeah, feels solid. Um, and yeah, just able to yeah really push on the brakes and, and I mean, leaning on the fronts, that's for sure. Um, and the car feels pretty consistent. So I think uh, all being, uh, well, expecting pretty much hopefully the same here in the feature, won't need to do too anything too crazy. And given the fact that conditions are exactly the same as well, uh, should be good to sort of, yeah, fuel that out as the race goes on here. So can you give us any insight into what your plan is for race two? Because it's, it's a track that's very difficult to pass on. You'll be starting back in 10th, but you do have a compulsory pit stop to do and uh, whack two more tires on the car. Um, any clues as to what you might be doing? Um, we've got a rough idea. Well, at least we, our timing and stuff gives us a bit of an idea how long that will, how much time that'll lose us. We're expecting somewhere in the margin of 30 seconds. We'll have to hopefully quickly check that here uh, before uh, the race starts. Um, but we just got to really play it by ear. Um, as uh, yeah, as you mentioned, and, and Dan Lockhart at the end of the race, whilst they were following me, definitely mentioned that uh, overtaking is going to be really hard. Um, hopefully, maybe pick up a couple of people uh, at the start with just a bit of pace advantage. Um, but otherwise, yeah, play it by ear, see how we go. But we're probably going to want to go long and maximize position near the front of the field uh, at this stage from what, how, how race one went at least. Sounds like a plan, Dan. Thank you very much for joining us. Hopefully we get another chance to chat to you after race two finishes. That certainly would be ideal, but uh, yeah, 30 minutes ago, got to get through that first. Cheers, race. <laughs> Absolutely. Dan Yeaman there, winner of the first race here at Barber Motorsports Park. And um, we'll, we'll see if we can get um, one of the Fensons in for a chat at some point, Jay. But other than that, um, that's all we've been able to uh, get for the time being. So now we turn our attentions towards race two. And I think that was some very useful information that Dan Yeaman gave us. If you're one of the drivers running up the front, going long is the best way to do it because this track um as far as overtaking goes you got plenty of opportunities but it's difficult to do yeah exactly right i mean as uh, as you just said there there's lots of places that you can do it but you've got to really capitalize on it and the easiest pass to play uh, pass to place the easiest place to pass we've said it time and time again where is it pit lane pit lane is the easiest place to make an yep. overtake so if you can nail your pit stop maybe save some fuel early on, maybe save yourself a second worth of fuel, you might be able to jump in and undercut someone by one second. 
if you can gain a second in your pit stop, that could be two th positions. As we saw in the race, there was only a second separating fourth, fifth, and sixth. So um, if you can gain a second in the pit stops, that could be two spots that you gain that you don't have to make overtakes with on track. So try and nail your pit stops each and every time. That is such an integral part to these sort of races. Um, integral as well, the uh, championship schedule. Now, Reese, we, uh, we know that there is the potential for rain in uh, in this car. So this series mm. could have rain at some point throughout the series. How exciting is that? That is very exciting indeed. Um, of course, the Delara LMP2, one of the cars that has rain tires enabled for 2024 season two, along with the other cars in the IMSA uh, series, the GT3s and the GTPs as well. Um, yeah, I, I'm wondering where the best chance for rain is going to be because, like, I mean, North America is um, just coming out of winter at the moment, so there is potential for rain. Um, Road America, I don't know. Um, you know, Wisconsin, it's uh, definitely a lot further north than Barber Motorsports Park in Alabama. Um, Detroit, CTMP, they're going to be in the uh, the northern section of North America as well, um, as well as Watkins Glen in uh, upstate New York. Um, Laguna Seca in California, I would expect, is uh, going to be a uh, guaranteed dry race. Other than that, it's all up in the air and it's going to bring uh, an extra um sense of uh of difficulty to the drivers out here breaking news for the drivers being told that there is a chance that rain could fall at one of the races so mm. be prepared we don't know where we haven't been told um but i know where the drivers wouldn't want it to be that'd be belle isle yeah and i know that the drivers will probably be betting the same as you that it won't be laguna Seca because i don't think i've ever seen a wet race there and i don't think they ever have um yeah. so so it leaves three tracks for it to rain at. Will it be all three? Will it be one? Will it be two? We don't know. It uh, just adds another exciting element there, doesn't it? Absolutely, it does. Um, f uh, going beyond rain, though, I I really like this schedule. It's, um, it's a North American tour is the main aim of this schedule. We have uh, one visit to Canada, obviously, at most sport for round five. But the rest of them, it is um, a who's who of uh, great United States road circuits. And, I mean, there's, there's, there's a couple that uh, you'd argue uh, could be on the schedule, like Road Atlanta, for example. But other than that, um, I think we've uh, run the gamut pretty well of, uh, of great U.S. road circuits. But we have to turn our attention to race two at Bar because it's about to get started. Seb Vandell on point pole position with the top 10 invert with Vinnie Nguyen starting alongside him. That is a repeat of uh, Nguyen's run at Sebring where he started on pole for race two. Jackson Dial and Dylan Gray will take up the second row. And then behind them, we've got fifth and sixth, Brandon Groach and Dylan Walker. Matt Keane's going to start out of seventh place. Lockhart Brownlee alongside him. And then we have Daniel Benefield and Daniel Yeaman starting off the uh, fifth row here. The rest of them, it's as they finished in race one. Turnbull and Finney with uh, Fenson and Kylie. Uh, first Fenson, of course, starting out of 13th spot. Dean Hunt and Aiden Luthwaite together again with James Solani and Sean Benici in 17th and 18th. The 10th row of the grid will be Eric Fenson and Sam Lambert. And then we have Chris Fogarty and Andrew Proctor, 21st and 22nd, and all on his lonesome on the final row of the grid, Nathaniel Coburn, who will be hoping for a bit of a better run this time around. Fingers crossed for him he can have a bit better run. He'll be hoping that it goes a bit smooth. There's still got a couple of minutes before we get underway, but the field is set. Now the drivers are ready. They're also having a good little bit of banter while they're on the grid too. There's a lot of uh, joking. There's a lot of giggling I can see on the, uh, the Zoom feed. So they're all having fun out there, which is great to see. And uh, Dean Hunt already getting in, asking if you can request his toe in advance. <laughs> yeah. Now course, that Dean's that, part that of the crew, fun. we can start picking on him. Yes. Right, yeah, yes, we on, can. Dean. Yeah, Dean Hunt, of course, um, joining SimSpeed for V8 Scott's supports. Um, it's uh, really nice to have uh, another new voice in the comms box to have a chat to over the course of things. There um, he is. There he is indeed. Dean uh, just getting prepped with his suit speed gloves on full we'll display. recognise his on camera in a second. Yeah, he certainly will. Um, a lot of drivers have the broadcast running in the background just to see 
um, where they're at. Um, maybe he's just in full focus mode right now. Those gloves do look nice, though. So. Oh, they do. Absolutely do. We flashed it up on screen during the warm-up. Of course, once again, Sued Speed have a discount on offer for spectators of the series. If you buy a pair of gloves or a shirt or both on SuedSpeed.com, you can use the code SPECTATOR at checkout for 10% off. Free shipping in Australia and New Zealand as well. Competitive uh, shipping rates worldwide if you live outside of Australia and New Zealand. Get yourself a pair. Um, but we'll turn our attention now to the rolling start. Three minutes on the clock is up on the grid time, and we'll get ready to go in just a few moments. This is Seb Vandell's best opportunity yet for a good result after a very slow start to the season. His championship defense not getting off the line uh, as well as he would have liked. So maybe Barber will be his chance to start that run. Uh, dial once again, start. Miles ahead of his nearest competitor in the uh, AM Championship class, so got a good chance to get another jump on the drivers. Of course, Dean Hunt starting second tonight in the championship, starting way back in 15th, so that's 12 positions between he and his nearest championship rival before the night started. That's a great start to the night for Jackson Dahl before he's even driven this race. Yeah, absolutely is. Jackson Dial, um, let's see if he can hold on to third spot here as Seb Vandell is holding them a bit longer than Dan Yeaman did in race one. Green flag flies and we are away already. Dial with a better start than Vinny Newen immediately into second place. But Newen's going to try and come back at him here into turn two as everyone files in to turn number two. Almost three wide between Luthwaite, Turnbull and Fenson. As it looks like the field has gotten through the first couple of turns nicely, but it is on for second. Look at this, Jay. Oh. Jackson Dial with the mother of all defences here. And there's a bit of drama with Brandon Groach getting involved with the drop bear trio. Yeah, and we saw Matt Keane. He was sprawled across the circuit facing sideways. So he has had big drama and Andrew Proctor facing the wrong direction as well. So we're going to replay that when we can. But side by side, the Dillons go at it. Walker and Gray and Dylan Walker will come out just ahead. Yep, outside exit is sometimes where you want to be. And turn eight at uh, Barber is one of those places. Look at the speed that these cars are carrying through this back half of the circuit. It's beautiful to watch downforce machines around a track like this, seeing the sheer pace that they carry through these corners. Well, um, Van Del has skipped away from the front of the field here. Dial, Newham, Walker and Gray are your top five. Benefield, Brownlee, uh, up into 6th and 7th. Dan Yeaman, our race one winner, has not made much of a move forward. He's only in ninth right now, as already lap one is completed for Seb Vandell. Now, keep an eye on the lap counter if you have one at your disposal. We are on lap two right now. It is the end of lap three that uh, is the opening of the pit window. So if any driver wants to get their mandatory pit stop done and out of the way early, that is the time. And if you're... Uh, further back in the field, maybe that's the best way to do it. There's some drama as well. Dylan Gray has uh, actually fallen back from Dylan Walker and Vinnie Newen and is now uh, the subject of a double-pronged attack here from Daniel Benefield and Lockhart Brownlee. And he's trying to keep it as Dylan Gray. Contact with Benefield sends him a little wide. And there goes Lockhart oh, Brownlee. No. This is going to be side-by-side side through the quickest corners on the track. Do they give each other room? Off the track goes Dylan Gray. Didn't have much of a choice there, but this is slowing up the whole pack behind them. Yeah, they've lost so much ground to Vinny Newen. Dylan Walker's taken huge advantage of all of that. And now also seeing that Dan Yeaman is dropping spots as well. He's lost a spot to Daniel Finney. He's about to lose another one to John O'Kiley. Not quite able to get that spot as Kiley. Henry Fenton now also side by side with Hayden Luthwaite. I've just seen James Solani stopped on the track too. So there's been dramas galore in this one. Yeah, absolutely has. And now it's uh, Drop Bear deciding who is going to lead the charge on Dylan Gray. And it looks like it is going to be Daniel Benefield. Him and Lockhart Brownlee going side by side through turn one. Now Brownlee has to defend from Brandon Groach. As that was very close there between Luthwaite and Eric F and Henry Fenson. Oh, the caution flag has been thrown. There's a problem. Nathaniel Coburn off. And that's Andrew Proctor who's had further issues there. And uh, he has been cleared, I think, to go off the circuit. Only has three wheels remaining. So uh, 
that's it's usually not the fastest there. way for a car to go on three wheels. Um, this no. goes back to the start of the race. So this is Matt Keane. Watch this is Proctor just ahead of him. He gets shuffled a little bit wide. No, that's sorry. That's one of the drop bear cars having issues. Here Ooh. comes Proctor here. Does he make contact? No, but he goes around. Ooh. He's had an issue after this point where it's uh, where it's put him in the fence and only got three wheels on the wagon. So we'll see if we can work out what's happened here, but the field goes on. Well, and uh, we are at the end of lap three, so next lap by they can pit. Pit window will open, but the pits also are closed at the moment, so nobody can come. Yeah, indeed. That's, um, that's going to be an issue there. Um, I can tell you that Proctor had his issue uh, coming through turn uh, 13 and 14. Unfortunately, he ran across the grass and it majorly unsettled the car, resulted in head-on contact with the tyre bundle. This is how it happened. He was trying to get back up to speed. I don't know if he was having uh, issues with the suspension of the car, but that will do it. A little bit too oh. much speed on the way in and a big smack. Doesn't look touched at all, so uh, explain quite a lot. We've actually seen a lot of drivers into the pits now. My understanding was it was uh, end of the next lap. Field would be able to pit, but drivers have come in now. Now they going yeah. to receive eye racing issued black flags for entering a closed pit. Yeah, maybe because this is a this is an automatic um, eye racing safety car, uh, AI controlled. Um, of course, race control through it, but we don't have uh, an independent safety car driver for this round. So, um, have to well, deal with for the eye racing pace car for pace this car. series. Yes, indeed. So, uh, yeah, um, it, it runs to oval pace car rules. When the pace car is thrown, the pit lane is closed, and pit lane opens when um, the field uh, has been under safety car for a lap. So drivers that have come into the pits, John O'Kiley, Sam Lambert, uh, Matt Keane, and Chris Fogarty. Andrew Proctor is, um, I think, retired from the race. Um, at the very least, he should get repairs done in the pits and might be able to head back out there. But I think we're going to yep, see. Um, oh, yep, there he goes. Nicely done. Look um, at the lights on the ambulance in the background, too. Oh, yeah. I didn't realize they activated under caution. If the huh. helicopter's got its birds flying. Everyone's coming into the pits. No real surprise there at all. Because as far as we understand now, we're, we're talking to race control in the background. They're in the same understanding as us, that the pit lane would have been closed, or should have been closed automatically by iRacing that previous lap. Um, we're not seeing any iRacing issue penalties, but they may come once the green flag flies. Yeah, I think that's that's what we'll have to count on, as pretty much everyone has come into the lane. I don't see why you so would have stayed out. No, so Dylan Gray, Daniel Finney, and James Solani uh, have big question marks over their heads right now. That's both SLM cars, plus a DDF racer. Um, Kylie, Lambert, and Keane having already taken their stop, but potentially with penalties hanging over their heads. And, uh, yeah, why wouldn't you come into the pits under safety car is the, uh, the big question. Especially when you've got to is... change tyres. I mean, the only only reason, sorry to cut you off, Reese, the only reason you think you wouldn't is if you are struggling so much to get pacing, uh, heat into your tyres. But I, even then, I don't understand why you wouldn't be it. It doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I'm I mean, it's a time set. thing. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a time thing as well, isn't it? Because yeah. when the field is slowed down behind the pace car, you have... Uh, you, you, you would need to come in because if you've got to get your pit stop done anyway, it's a mandatory pit stop, you want to lose as little time as possible. If you're staying out, then you're committing to potentially pitting under green and losing yourself a ton of time unless you're banking on another safety car. And even then, everyone's already completed their mandatory pit stop. You'd end up going to the back of the field anyway. Some drivers that are having some issues here with their iRacing spotter and... Actually, Matt Keane may have actually just been tech issues full stop because he's slowing down and, and slowing the rest of the field up. And there's, there's drivers that are getting told they have to let people buy and things like that. I think it could be from these penalties that we're, we're assuming will get issued once the drivers get the green flag. Mm. 
Or is the so, penalty that to drop to the end of the line? That the penalty yeah, I don't that they're know. receiving? Maybe. Um, I'm not seeing anyone with a black flag next no, to neither. their name yet. So, but those three that pitted on that first lap, they're all dropping to the back. So I'm guessing they're getting the NASCAR style drop to the end of the longest line. Yeah, okay. Which is the only line. They're going to have to do that very, very quickly. Otherwise, they will get black flags from iRacing. Mm. And we, we all know how fun they are not, race. No, yeah, certainly. We've all been at the receiving end of one of those. The The caution has been extended by race control, so I think we are going to, um, yeah, one more lap as the pace car crosses the start-finish line, which isn't actually marked on Barber. It's usually rolling starts only at this place. There you go. Lights are off on the pace car. So we'll be coming in at the end of this lap for a run back to the green flag. And uh, it is currently Dylan Gray who leads the way. One of three cars who haven't taken a stop yet. Of the cars that have pitted, Seb Vandell is the leader. Dylan Walker will have made his way up to second. And as you said, there's no line painted on the ground for the start line, which also means there's no line on the ground for the finish line. So photo finishes, we sort of have to guess where the line is. Somewhere around where yeah. Barney's standing, but we're not 100% sure exactly where it is. I love about this place as well so many vantage points you can see so much of the track yeah this this place is fantastic for spectators um you know you you can position yourself pretty much anywhere and you have a great view of uh, most of the racetrack um this is actually the view from the start finish straight right here you can see all the way down the back straight and uh the run up to seven seven a and b and then Zoom even the a little Yep, yep, the, the, the museum in the background, which hosts a massive car and bike collection. And then the run down uh, through turns 11 and 12 as well. Um, the uh, fast chicane on the very back straight of the circuit. Pretty fantastic venue, this. I wish it was used a lot more than it currently is within iRacing. It's anywhere near enough. I think you and I have agreed on that for years as Andrew Proctor's getting a wave around the pace car, so he's getting that back, which is cool to see. Racing, and there's a little shortcut that you have for the uh, the short circuit. Like I said, you can see all the way through 11 and 12, and there is the cool. Yeah, One definitely. One of the coolest this... and most iconic parts of the track. Indeed, but Barber's probably not the best place to go to watch racing if you're an arachnophobe. <laughs> no, definitely not. Don't like your ants or your spiders not go but if you do love sculptures amazing indeed some fantastic artwork around this circuit which is all modeled in the iRacing sim all right so Andrew Proctor's just made his way uh, through turn two here as the rest of the field are getting ready to go green this will certainly be an interesting restart and they might catch Proctor back up when um, things get started so on the power gets Dylan Gray and we're racing once again at Barber Seb Vandell already on the attack here, past James Solani into turn one. But, uh, looks like Walker's going to follow him through there. Jackson Dial and Lockhart Brownlee, who goes very wide in turn two. Uh, next up Ooh. on the roster, Brandon Groach side by side with Daniel Yeaman, meanwhile, for uh, ninth place. Goes defensive. Benefield is going to try and make the move here on Yeaman. Ended up getting behind him in the pit stop cycle. So uh, Benefield has a bit more work to do. Slight slide for Brandon Groach. Struggling to get on the power here. It's a surprise that uh, Benefield lost out as much as he did in the pit stop. He lost a lot of ground in the transit through the lane. So he's uh, they're going to be a bit disappointed with that. Yeaman through... Grochley is going to hold on to the position. That's some good driving from Brandon Grochley to hold that spot. He did not deserve to hold it based on where he was positioned. But he's done a good job, and now Yeaman's susceptible to his teammate. Well, oh, oh easy does it, Dan Yeaman. That's going to leave the door wide open for Benefield to come through. That's some big oversteer there for our race one winner. And that is a change between the drop beer cars there. A little bit slow through the final corner was Aiden Luthwaite. Meanwhile, that gives David Turnbull the run into turn one. So the same for Dean Hunt. A little bit of contact between them. Luthwaite trying to fight for it to the very end. 
This is an interesting battle here as uh, we look at Lockhart Brownlee, who's trying to get past Vinny Nguyen here. To the inside he goes, to the inside Dan Benefield goes behind him. Big dive indeed, and Brownlee's around and ends up uh, getting collected by Brandon Groach too. That's damage there for the number 22. So big disaster there for Brownlee, who uh, actually won the second race at Sebring and is the championship leader coming into this round. That car does not look healthy. Look at the front wheel. Yeah, that's that's big damage there for Lockhart Brownlee. I think Coburn's around as well. He actually was one of the cars that made contact late on in the piece. He didn't make contact with Brownlee himself, but it came from that incident that he's made contact with someone. So Brandon Grosch probably the one that's lost out other than Brownlee there because he dropped behind Benefield, behind Yeaman Fence and Turnbull and Luthwaite. He's lost heaps of ground. Now he's got Dean Hunt tucked right under his rear wing. I'm surprised he didn't jump into the pits because that oh. car does look damaged and it's going to be even more damaged now with that run off the circuit. The uh, the front downforce will be compromised there. I understand him staying out just to feel out the car, but uh, that's, that's not good. Brownlee, though, is it's going to try and make it into the pits. And, oh, look at that. Said Vandell. Now uh, trying to get past Dylan Gray here. Dylan Walker is up against Daniel Finney. And Finney's going to leave it be for the time being. Uh, so Gray now having to defend from the number one. But remember, he hasn't taken his pit stop yet. Vandell with fresher tyres on the car. He has plenty more to work with here. Definitely does. How much will he push it? Well, I think that answers that pretty easily. A lot. Probably just Indeed. beyond the limit. Yeah, just beyond. Has to dial it back just a little bit. And look for another way through at some other place. I mean, all things considered, Vandell has the advantage over the rest of the cars that are pitted. Um, Walker, I don't think, is going to be much of a threat to him unless uh, Gray backs him up. How long will Gray, uh, Finney, and Solani stay out here is the question on my mind. They're going to have to go as long as they can now, really, don't they? It, they've, yeah. They've made the wrong call, and I'm sure that they will agree that they've made the wrong call when they look back at it. But they've really got to hope for another safety car to be able to make anything out of this race. As Groach comes in to get another car, they're going to jump in the spare and go again because... First one wasn't looking to crash up. No, certainly wasn't. Meanwhile, this battle between David Turnbull and Henry Fenson is uh, providing great viewing for Aidan Luthwaite, who's uh, trying his best to stay in touch with these guys. They'll be slowing each other up a bit through this final section, depending on how aggressive Turnbull is. Seems like Henry Fenson has most, uh, more or less sorted out his issues with uh, this sequence of turns from race one tiny bit of oversteer on the way in for David Turnbull. This is the view on board from Sam Lambert, who's a long way behind anyone else. John O'Kiley is about a corner ahead of him, but we have to keep an eye out for Chris Fogarty, who's potentially going to make a move here on the number eight car. You're making a move. Dylan Walker's found some pace, and he's got back past Seb Vandell, so look out here. Vandell's feeling some pressure. Daniel Finney's there, but the person he's really worried about is Daniel Benefield. He is not far away. The three Daniels are right behind Vandell now. It seems if you've got a, a D as your first letter of your name, you're on for a top five. Yeah, looks like it. Dylan, Dylan, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Five of the top six. Yeah. So, uh, so Maybe yeah. Maybe Turnbull, uh, Dean Hunt need to, to pull the finger out for the rest of the D drivers. Yeah, indeed they do. Get a bit more pace on. Have a look at this. This is a Speaking quite of. interesting pack of cars. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, Jackson Dial is trying to... Uh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong place on the circuit here. David Turnbull um, trying to keep Eric Fenson behind him. Dean Hunt and Matt Keane fighting hard. This uh, second SLM car has got the world ahead of him to try and make up some spots. Only 12 minutes to go in the race. Meanwhile, fastest car that time by was Dan Yeaman, 1 minute 12.6. Pretty much everyone else was running a 1 minute 13 or worse. You on as well? 
Oculus Quest here. What's it called now? The Meta Meta Quest? It's an Something Oculus to that effect. It used to be the Oculus Rift, now it's the Oculus Quest, and now it's the Quest, whatever it is. The one I've got. The same one that Vinny's running with, and it's uh being him right at the moment. He's just ahead of Henry Fenton, but he's in the top ten, which will be what he is aiming for in this series. Got a bit of damage on the side of the car though, I just saw. Hmm. See how much of an effect that has on him. Look at the Checking side pod on the other car, sorry. Cut me off the race. Look at the side pod. See it on this angle here. Racecraft wording is Ooh, all yeah. bent up. Yeah, a bit warped there. A little bit of side-by-side -side contact as the number 67 of Daniel Finney uh, gets passed by Daniel Benefield. And he's going to be chasing down Vandell and Walker, who swapped positions this time last lap. And uh, I took a look at it on my end. It was a pretty intense move by Dylan Walker to get past Seb Vandell. And he's held on to the position for the time being. But Vandell, looking a little quicker, took a tenth out of Walker on the last lap and a little bit more besides. So there's going to be more to come from these two. This is how it happened. So Vandell, a little bit offline here, coming into the last couple of corners. And Walker was right there to take advantage. This is the uh, move for the effective lead of the race. Look at the race exit control. there from Dylan Walker. Race control are going to look at this because there was a little bit of a bump there. And look, another one. So they've actually yeah. made contact twice and then... Three times. Uh, yeah, three times. Walker, the, I think on that last one, was like, there's no way you're bumping me twice and I'm not forcing you off the road. So there's a little bit of blood boiling over between these two as it ran side by side up through that section. Very, very difficult. Under, um, underutilized move, but it is a very, very difficult place to do in a high-powered car. That's a nice move to get done in the end, though. You can so easily get wheel spin and, and lose traction up through the, the rise there if you take the angle of that um, that corner wrong, which you often do when you're too wide. Yeah, indeed. Oh, I saw a big it's, whiff of smoke. Yeah, I think that's yeah. Dylan. Is it Dylan Proctor? Ray? It might be Proctor. Yeah, he's trying to get out of the way. Trying to do the right thing, but this track is a difficult one to do that. Yeah, it is. It's a very wide track, as you can see, but the way the corners flow into each other, it makes it difficult to actually make a pass stick. So Proctor, all he can do here is just try and stay out of the way as best he can. I know that uh, Seb Vandell's not going to be too happy cooped up behind him here, but uh, Proctor shouldn't make this too difficult on the way into turns uh, 10 and 11. A bit more space for Benefield to work his way past too. So that is um, one piece of the puzzle uh, gone for these drivers. And now they have to work their way forward a little more. Um, Dylan Gray still in the lead of the race, but he's got Dylan Walker for company and Seb Vandell watching on from behind. We don't know if there's going to be some body damage from the, uh, the taps that Dylan Walker uh, gave him, but hopefully... The car is in a good enough shape to the very end. And what's Dahl's happened had here? a shocker of a lap, and this is why. He's lost four positions on this lap. It looked good through there, but he, he was a little wide through eight. But watch this here through 11. Bounces off the oh. curb. Big slide through 12. Just keeps it on the grass and doesn't run into the wall. But there's one, two, three gone. About to be four. Four positions lost from one small error. Well held, though. Uh, could have been very easy to have that end in the barrier. But wow, look at this. Oh, my Lord. James Solani has got the entire field behind him, it looks like. Oh, no. Oh, no. Vinny Newen. And uh, is that Eric Fenson? Henry. It, Henry. Henry Fenson that has gone around as well. That's a big incident there for those drivers. And a consequence of um, drivers being out of strategy, out of place. James Solani was one of the drivers that hadn't pitted yet. And unfortunately, that has cost Nguyen and Fenson. It has. They'll be uh, very frustrated with this. As I said, that they were, they were on for top tens. Probably actually would have been top sevens. Yeah, just ran offline, bounced it over the curves, following the, the car, Solani. And then uh, Nguyen... It was contact, obviously, but I don't know how much of that was the fault of the driver ahead just being that little bit slower. And once you're committed in that corner, you can't do much more. As Dylan Gray, 
almost like gave up the lead. Have a look at how much this has checked this top five up now. Jeez. Oh, Little oh, brush this. of the fenders there. <laughs> Dylan Gray is trying desperately to hold on to this lead, but we know that he has to take his pit stop at some point. Does he remember he has to take a pit stop? I'm sure he's got... I don't know. I'm sure race control have told them they have to pit. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. But now, the effective top three are going to have to make their way past as news from race control, Henry Fenson has been given a black flag for that contact with Vinnie Nguyen. So, uh, unfortunate for Fenson oh. as... Gray catches the grass on the exit of the final turn. How hard is he going to defend this as Dylan Walker tries to range in on him coming into the first turn? This has not only compressed the effect of top three together, it's brought Yeaman right into the fight for the podium as well. The exciting part is, Reese. they've still got six laps of racing to go. Six minutes on the clock, minute 12, minute 13 lap times. They've still got five, six laps to go. So plenty of racing oh! left. Huge slide from Dylan Gray. His tyres are starting to go oh. off. The others are all on fresh tyres. Oh my lord, here we go then, side by side between Vandell and Benefield. Vandell now has uh, proper damage to his front, and he's going to try and go for it here. Big slide, tries to oh. get it together as Benefield and Yeaman are going to pincer move him. Three wide coming into turn 10. Who's going to win this one out? Vandell across the grass. You can see the he's frustration in his eyes. He's not happy at all with how this race is going. He was shaking his head just before we got him up on screen and then he had a huge moment where there was contact and interlocking wheels so he is not happy with how this is playing out and believe it or not Dylan Gray is still leading the race he still hasn't come in for his mandatory pit stop so he's going to have to work some way out of this the uh, effective in. top four yep there goes Solani finally into the lane so that only leaves Daniel Finney and Dylan Gray as the car's yet to make a stop here as that's Turnbull that's had some trouble in the Frog Leap 702 he's going to lose out to Henry Fenson who uh, once again has that penalty hanging over his head what can Dylan Gray do to try and keep these guys behind him. I mean, it's basically not a battle at this point. It, it is up to Walker to try and make his way past here until Gray inevitably comes into the pits. But you can see how much of a pace difference there is. Gray is struggling to keep up the speed and it looks like these guys are going to be compressed together again behind him. One thing about this group though is if Dylan Gray causes the whole pack to slow up enough, going to lose him time to the group that he is actually battling with out on track which is going to be the guys Matt Keane, Henry Fence and even further back the likes of he uh, sorry Matt Keane, Eric Fence and all further back to Henry Fence and David Turnbull if they end up matching him or being quicker than him in his one lap pace with him holding these guys up and battling with them it could cost him even more in the long term so it would almost be smarter for Dylan Gray to let them go and then he race on and just match them for pace at the back of the group so we basically got three laps to go at this point. Um, D Dylan Gray has to pit sometime in the next two laps. If he comes in right at the end of the race, then that's not going to be good enough. As he tries to defend, that's a big slide there from Dylan Walker, and that's a lot of pace lost. It's going to bring Vandell, Benefield, and Yeaman back into contention here. I think uh, Vandell's a little bit stressed about how this is going. He's oh, yeah, making I think all so. sorts of facial expressions I've never seen him make before. He is really stressed about this. He wants this position. He knew it was a chance for him to gain big bulk points on the guys he's battling in the championship. And Dylan Gray, Dylan Walker's pace as well, made it a lot more difficult than he was hoping. Yeah, it's been a tough start to the season for Seb Vandell, but... We know how good of a driver he is. We know he's going to try and race through this as best he can. And it seems like Benefield and Yeaman have backed off on their attack a little bit here as we see the 404 of Chris Fogarty go for a spin at the hairpin. And unfortunately, that has collected Sam Lambert as well, another driver who's had a very tough night out here. 
So keep your eyes here on Dan Benefield and Seb Vandell. Keep an eye also on the lead as Dylan Gray is defensive once again versus Dylan Walker. And this has compressed everyone together once more. Dylan Gray, certainly not the quickest car out there. Um, I mean, look at the lap times from last lap. It was a 1 minute 13 for Dylan Gray and Dylan Walker. But everyone behind them, Vandell, Benefield and Yeaman, setting 1 minute 12s. This is a magnificent pack who's going to win out here with a minute and 40 to go if gray knows that he still has to pit he has to come in now and i reckon aiden luthwaite is the driver that he's really racing right now 17 odd seconds 20 seconds is around about the pit lane lost time so he's really battling aiden luthwaite last lap by there he goes he lost five tenths of a second in that battling here he oh! is in the pits benefield benefield, benefield spins Something's gone massively wrong from there. He tried to go for the move on Vandell, but Seb, it looks like, wasn't having it. White flag is out. You know what? I think a few of the drivers might have the red flag out because they are looking like angry bulls right now. The uh, blood pressure is up. Vandell is not happy. Damon's got stress on his face that I've never seen before, and Brownlee... He's uh, not happy with how this race is go going either. So lots of drivers that aren't too happy with everything happening out on track. Dylan Gray's finished his pit stop. Where's he going to rejoin? He's a long way back from where I thought he was going to be. Yeah, man, he's come out um, in 15th place. Looks like Henry Fenson with an issue out there. Is I think he's just got DQ'd. No, he got DQ'd for not serving his black flag that uh, race control issued. Oh, no. Well... Oh, that's going to be the way of it, unfortunately. Uh, end of the final lap, though. It's going to be a 21-lap run here in race two at Barber Motorsports Park. Dylan Walker is far enough ahead of Seb Vandell. I don't think he has to worry about much pressure. And the chequered flag will fly, and Dylan Walker will take the win in race two. Seb Vandell up to second spot. Good job from him to overcome all the dramas. And Dan Yeaman in third spot. Benefield, meanwhile, holds on to fourth with uh, fifth place for Matt Keane. Eric Fenson in P6. Jackson Dial, Dean Hunt round out the first and second positions in AM. And Sean Benici will get third in class, which is huge for, uh, for those guys for the championship as well. Uh, just hearing as well, round winner, Dylan Walker will win the round with 103 points. You compare that to last round, 102 points was the winner of, uh, was the winning score for the round. So he's gained one more point than what we saw uh, Lockout Brownlee win in the first round. So congratulations, Dylan Walker. It's made this championship a whole lot more exciting. Um, and Jackson Dial, no surprise that he's won the AM class for the round. 52 points. What a race that was, though. That was absolutely thrilling from start to finish. Even the action under safety car was exciting. Yeah, certainly was. Man, if you're looking for entertainment, the Suit Speed Sports Car Series is where it's at. Well, we'll go through our results, then we'll uh, go into the further discussions here. Dylan Walker um, taking the win in race two, wins the round with 103 points, backing up his fifth place in race one. Um, and then Vandell and Yeaman completing the podium. Benefield, Keane, Fenson, Dial winning the AM class. Dean Hunt and Sean Benici will join him on the AM class podium. Aiden Luthwaite getting ninth, which is uh, a big improvement there for him from uh, his unfortunate first race. Rest of the field, uh, Kylie when Kylie finishing 11th and big pack from uh, Vinny Nguyen, Brandon Groach, David Turnbull, Dylan Gray. That's where he's rejoined back in 15th overall. What's at 11th in class? So that has hurt him leaving that pit stop right until the last minute. Sam uh, Lambert finishes 16th. Just behind him is Daniel Finney, who also pitted right at the end of the race on that same lap. Chris Fogarty, uh, James Solani, Nathaniel Coburn, and then we've got Lockup Brownlee, uh, who ended up finishing over a minute 50 back in the end. Henry Fenson and Andrew Proctor, they did not finish. Fenson being uh, disqualification at the end there due to uh, not serving his black flag that was issued from race control for that incident we did see. 
Well, we're uh, talking about results. This is it what everyone gets? Round winners going to get a fifty dollar voucher from Sid Speed H. Indeed, that's a great discount on a pair of gloves or a t-shirt there for uh, for Dylan Walker and for Jackson Dial in uh, this round. And of course, we got to think about the driver of the day um, as voted. Be. Yeah, it's it's going to be really tough. We had a lot of great performances in this round, uh, but a thirty dollar suit speed voucher um, will probably have to go to. Um, we we did have a bit of a discussion here. Thirteen positions up in race two for Eric Fenson. Um, that was a great comeback from the unfortunate goings on for him in the uh, the first race. So I reckon driver of the day will have to go to Eric Fenson. I agree, one hundred percent. That's a brilliant drive. And that was that little uh, bit of sculpture there on the on the fence there. Race this little motorbike. Oh yeah, and this too, nicely done. Well, we are into the driver interview stage of the night here, and first off is going to be the number fifty-three of Dylan Walker. That was a very interesting uh, race too, there, Dylan. Uh, hemmed up behind Dylan Gray, who took his pit stop very late. You must have been stressed with everything uh, compressing behind you there. Uh, yeah, um, I was starting to think that he'd already pitted, to be honest. Um, yeah, it was a bit stressy, especially with the fast boys closing up behind, but managed to hold on, which is the main thing. Indeed you did, and a round winner as well with 103 points. Um, so uh, that that certainly is helping out your championship campaign here. Yeah, no, definitely wrapped with the result. Um, bit disappointed with the quality effort, um, only P8. I definitely had a bit more pace in the bag, but um, yeah, recovered well and definitely happy where we ended up. Indeed. Um, what about race one as well from eighth to fifth? Qualifying obviously didn't go your way. You were eighth, probably a little bit lower than you were expecting, but um, it ultimately came your way in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, Seb had a pit lane start. Uh, I can't remember why, but yeah, he was pretty well a free spot. Um, and then I got, I think it was Grochi off the jump. I got one of them off the jump, and then, uh, yeah, from there, I think I made one move, and that was about it, so it wasn't really an entertaining race. Um, but, yeah, I was just stuck behind uh, Matt. That was the widest P2 I've ever seen. Couldn't get past the bloke. Well, ultimately, um, win on the board for you in uh, the second season of the Sud Speed Sports Car Series. Is there anyone you'd like to thank for it? Ah, uh, yeah. All the boys at Part Logistics, TND Precision, and First Take Smoke Alarms, as well as all the ORL boys for the support. Excellent stuff. Uh, Dylan Walker there with us in uh, the SimSpeed comms box. And uh, we also have the AM class winner for the round in here with us. Jackson Dial joins us. Jackson, another great performance from you. Uh, an eighth and a seventh on the board. Long way ahead of everyone else in your class. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah, definitely uh, was a hard week for me. Uh, I only just bought the track yesterday, so didn't put in the practice I'd like due to other commitments. Um, but yeah, I'm overall happy with my rates. Uh, I was struggling a lot with consistency um, two weeks ago, and I felt like heat one, I had a lot of lot of good pace. Uh, second race, I definitely dropped the ball a bit. I made two pretty big mistakes, kept the car off the wall, but I uh, dropped back quite a bit because of that. So got really close in the end with Dean, but managed to hold it. Uh, racing in the pack must have been very stressful considering how difficult this track uh, is to pass at. Uh, it definitely was. There's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of opportunities, but you really have to trust the drivers around you not to turn in if you do take them under the brakes. And But it's really clean on my end tonight. So, uh, yeah, very happy. Absolutely. Well, um, congratulations on your round win as well in the AM class. Is there anyone you'd like to thank before we let you go? My teammate, as always, Aiden Lufway. Excellent stuff. Jackson Dial with us, uh, AM class winner for the round. And finally, we have our driver of the day in the box with us, Eric Fenson. Um, that was a great fight back for you, Eric. Um, obviously, race one didn't go to plan from 10th to 19th. Um, what do you think was the main factor in that? Uh, the penalty I got, I figured. Yep, that makes sense. Um, <laughs> yeah, misjudged how long my car was. And yeah, just got squeezed a bit i don't know Bad yeah. judgment. difficult uh, difficult runnings around this track especially with such a short race to start off the night you you kind of have to be aggressive to uh, to make those kinds of moves but the track made it difficult 
Yeah, it did. Yeah, uh, the like turn two comes in a bit. And I saw a gap, but it closed up. Uh, yeah, just a bit too eager, I guess. Well, regardless, race two went a lot better for you. You managed to convert that 19th place start to a sixth place finish. What do you think was the key to that? I think my brother taking out three cars is pretty good. Uh, nice <laughs> too. But yeah, that safety car helped a lot, keeping the field together and then, yeah, just avoiding accidents mostly um, and following faster cars than me. Yeah, survival was key here at Barber Motorsports Park. Well, a $30 suit speed voucher is going to come your way, Eric. So congratulations for that. And Thanks, uh, yeah, excellent stuff from you. Is there anyone you'd like to thank before we let you go? Uh, yeah, just uh, Stockman's uh, Burgers, Beers and Desserts in DY if you're ever in Sydney. Uh, some of the best burgers in the country, I reckon. You can go and check them out in DY. Brilliant stuff. Eric Fenson with us, uh, driver of the day for round two. And of course, Jay, we will move on to the next round in two weeks' time. 26th of March, we are going to Road America. It's going to be Slipstream City. Will it be uh, Slipstream City? Slippery Slipstream City. Will it be wet? Mm. Will it be dry? The drivers don't know. We don't know. Race control, they've probably worked it out already, but... How long until we find out? We don't know, but uh, make sure you join us. It'll be one of our first wet broadcasts. Maybe, may not be, we don't know. Indeed, it's going to be interesting. Make sure that you mark that date and time in your calendar, 8.15 Australian Eastern Daylight Time here on SimSpeed TV. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. We want to thank uh, Sued Speed, of course, for putting the series on and uh, the drivers as well for bringing us a fantastic show once again. I'm Reese Gardner, Jay Kennedy with me in the comms box and producing behind the scenes from all of us here at SimSpeed TV live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch and Kick. We say bye for now, but certainly not for forever logitech g pro invitational is starting tomorrow night make sure you catch that